we have here is my old MacBook Pro. This is the laptop that I have been using for the past six years. Um, primarily use it for my YouTube video uh, editing and uploading. It's been a very good laptop for the past six years, uh, but it's getting extremely sluggish. It has run every Mac OS version from 7.5.3 all the way to the current and latest release of Sierra. Um, this laptop cost me a pretty penny when it was new. I bought it for about $1,500, and then I immediately upgraded it to uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM from the original 4. This is a 2011 model. I believe this is the early 2011 model. This um, <clears throat> was actually the first 13-inch MacBook to feature the uh, i7 dual-core processor. Yes, it's hyper-threaded, but it's still a dual-core processor. You can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig with lipstick. Um, one of the problems I'm having with this laptop is that it's just, it, it is getting very slow. It's taking forever to do even basic things. And it's gotten so bad that I've actually toyed with the idea of buying a new laptop. Naturally, I'm not buying a new Mac. I'm going to go over to the Windows camp again. So rather than do that right now, I decided why not put a little bit of money into it? Um, I actually went out and bought this PNY SSD. Uh, this is a 480 gigabyte SSD. Um, this cost me about $133 at Best Buy. Comes with a three-year warranty, I believe. Yep, three-year limited warranty. Has a mean time between failure of two million hours and a read speed of 550 megabytes per second and a write speed of 520 megabytes per second. Spoiler alert, this is the original hard drive from the MacBook. No, not this one. Actually, <laughs> where the hell did I put it? It's here somewhere. Uh, oh, it's inside this box. Um, the original Hitachi drive, I believe, has a read speed of something like 50 megabytes per second. It's, it's crazy slow. Um, but the laptop supports USB... I'm sorry, it, it actually has a... Um, I almost said USB. <laughs> it's a SATA 3 uh, interface, so it can better handle the 6... What is it? 6 gigabits per... Giga, yeah, gigabits per second transfer speed that the um, the PNY drive is uh, rated for. So, um, so we're going to take the plastic protective cover off. By the way, this upgrade has already been done as of this filming because I'm I decided to go through the footage and, and just I ended up throwing it all away. I'm not happy with any of the footage. It's it's just a mess. So step one and just pretend that this laptop has the original hard drive in it. It doesn't, but you'll see what I mean. So we're gonna re we're doing a reenactment. This is like America's Most Wanted, where they reenact crimes that have already been committed. So we're gonna use the proper size screwdriver to remove the MacBook Pro's um, screws. This MacBook Pro is one of the cleanest. 2011 MacBook Pros you'll ever find. I take very good care of this machine. Um, every once in a while I pull the plastic casings off and I clean the aluminum with window cleaner. And that's to remove any abrasive sand, silt, and the occasional crumbs. Because yes, as a technician, I spend a lot of time repairing laptops that have been uh, damaged by liquid spills pet hair, and other unmentionable liquids. So, I, um, I'm no stranger to what can happen when a liquid spill happens on a computer. I make most of my money fixing those machines. Not really. It's a small part of my job. I don't do, the, I don't do uh, board repair like, you know, Louis Rossman does, but um, that's because we're, my organization isn't equipped or able to pay for all the materials I need to, uh, to repair two or three boards a year. So we just replace the entire board. It's cheaper that way. If you do a lot of them, it's a different story, but anyway. So here's the inside of my MacBook Pro. You can see the PNY drive is installed. Now, if you're buying this drive, it comes with a spacer. 
Now that spacer is this little piece right here. And it's primarily for laptops that have originally shipped with drives that are this thick. And uh, how thick is this drive? I don't have a good ruler here nearby, do I? I have the edge of my Leatherman tool. <laughs> the drive is approximately seven millimeters thick. Or, I think it's a quarter of an inch. About a quarter of an inch thick. The SSD is slightly thinner than that. And uh, where thickness matters is when you have a laptop that has no, um, it has no drive caddy or no mounting equipment of any kind. Some laptops, the drive just slips into a, into a compartment and you slide it forward and the cover just locks it down in place. As a matter of fact, my IBM um, ThinkPad Z61 is one, of, one such machine. In that case, this spacer will prevent the drive or the SSD from flopping around in that bay. And that's where you want to make sure that it gets installed. Now on my MacBook, that's not really the case. It's actually held in place by four rubber grommets. Um, but I figure, might as well, you know, <laughs> might as well put it in there. Um, now, the performance of this machine has been I've absolutely drastically improved, as you're going to see later in this video. Um, well, I didn't, do, I didn't think to do a before video of how it performs. I, I did do an after video, and oh my god, it is the, the best, the, the, it is the most important upgrade I've ever done on any of my machines. This laptop that has lasted me a whopping six years, I'm probably going to get another couple years out of it, unless something major goes wrong. Now. While I was here, I thought about doing this. Uh, there's another modification that's popular on these older MacBook Pros, and that is to remove the optical drive and replace it uh, with a, um, <clears throat> another drive bay. You can do that. I decided not to do that because I like having the optical drive, and I just don't need another drive in here. I don't do enough um, large uh, amounts of... I don't do a lot of data handling, like large amounts of data. So I don't really need to have another drive in here. But occasionally I do deal with uh, DVDs and CDs. So anyway, on a MacBook Pro, you just take, or I'll just show you real quick. If you are doing one of these, um, there's just two screws here, here, and you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver on this model. Pop those out and this bar comes up and the drive will simply slide right out, out of the way. It's really not, uh, <clears throat> not difficult to do. So we're going to screw this back together. And uh, I'm going to now show you what I did to uh, bring my data off of... So when I'm, what, before you get to this step, before you start ripping the drive out, you're going to want to do a complete, either make an image of the drive or a time machine backup. So there's basically three ways you can do this. Number one, uh, you can use Time Machine. That's the easiest way. If your old drive is still functional and you have no issues, uh, you know, um, getting the backup done in the first place, just make sure you do a full backup with no exclusions. You're going to want to back up the, not only the data, but the system and applications as well. And it's pretty much the most foolproof way. So let's say we just put in our SSD. We just put it in, we've already got our time machine backup, and we want to bring it back from a blank drive. So basically, what that means is you have a, a working time machine backup that is current, and you have an internet connection. This is important. Now I don't remember, and I should, I should know this because I've been an Apple tech for nine years. Um, I should know the answer to this, but I don't know when Apple started implementing, um, and I could look it up, but I'm too lazy at the moment, but when Apple started implementing what's called internet recovery, internet recovery is a utility that Apple um, rolled out just around the time they stopped including physical copies of Mac OS um, <clears throat> with their machines. 
Prior to internet recovery, every Mac received a copy of the original system software. But when Apple stopped issuing that with their new machines, they had to come up with a way for people to recover from disasters. And that's where internet recovery came in. I'm going to just torque these down a little bit more. I actually have the Apple authorized or Apple um, blessed torque driver. It actually is a, it's a preset clicker torque screwdriver. It's a $75 screwdriver. I have one at work. And it would allow me to preset the torque on all of these screws. And then it would click when that torque is achieved. It's pretty cool. Anyway. So to run internet recovery, it's actually really easy to do. Any, any, any monkey can do it. That's what I love about Apple because, you know, when it comes to, you know, getting computers for family members and friends and people who don't really have any real tech skills at, the, at this point in their lives, Apple is a, is a pretty friendly machine to work with. And while they may be screwing over the pro population, they still make a great consumer laptop. So we're going to power this up, it, albeit expensive. I'm going to do um, Option Command R, which will launch Internet Recovery. And this sometimes can take a few minutes to load. So I'm going to stop the camera, and when it comes up, we'll be back. Now, if you've never used Internet Recovery, it will ask you to connect to a wireless network, or if you have a, a physical hardwired Ethernet connection, it will just use that. I recommend Ethernet over wireless, it's just a bit faster. Uh, I want to mention also, I bought, in, order, in preparation for doing this, I bought one of these um, two terabyte My Passport Ultras um, from the Walmart Black Friday sale. And uh, unfortunately, now it worked for the, for the first initial Time Machine backup, so I unplugged it, I set it aside, I went out and I bought my SSD, I went to go recover for my time machine backup and guess what happened it failed it failed I can't believe it the drive failed so I just went to Walmart I just got back a little while ago and I got a new drive they exchanged it and they were very rude about it um, I didn't tell them that I pulled all four platters out of it it's a four it's a very very thick four platter two and a half inch drive in there um, but because it had sensitive data that I could not get off, it had everything, my, all of my financial everything. It was unencrypted. That was mistake number one. I didn't encrypt my backup. Had I encrypted it, it wouldn't have been a problem. But because it contains so much sensitive data, I had to do something sneaky. So I pulled the drive out, I took the cover off, and I took out all four platters, put it back together again, and sent it back to Walmart. Not proud of that, but... <sighs> I'm not going to throw $70 out the window, um, and I'm not going to let my data get compromised. So if I, you know, if they figure out what happened and they call me and they want their money back or something, well, I guess I'll have to cross that bridge when I get there. Now, in order to get my backup done, because I didn't have a functioning drive anymore, I, I ran a uh, second time machine backup, and I, I took the 500 gig drive out of my... Uh, Lenovo ThinkPad. Now this one, uh, there's nothing on the laptop that I care about, so it was really kind of a wash at this point. So there's that drive there, and uh, I plugged it into the dock connector from my dead Seagate drive. So we're going to simulate this recovery process. I'm going to plug in that drive, and I'm going to show you what happens in internet recovery when you have a good time machine backup. This drive failed a little while ago. Um, it was it started off kind of performing badly until it finally just said screw you and died. Um, <clears throat> so that it's like I've, I have had nothing but bad luck with time machine drives lately. One more thing I want to point out because this is an older model uh, MacBook Pro, it only has USB 2.0. There is no USB 3.0 interface on this device, so um, it, it is a very slow process, but unfortunately a very necessary one. Here's a drive for my external, um, my old external backup 
enclosure. Ironically, it's the exact same make and model as the uh, one that we're recovering from. In fact, um, it's identical. In fact, yeah, Momentous Thin 500, part number 1G, 1DG142500, part number, no, it's a different part number, 9WS142567. Um, but yeah, basically the same drive. Data manufacturer 10 of 2012, and this is 5 of 2014. But we're going to take a framing hammer to this drive, um, just and then throw it away because I don't. Again, it, it's even though the drive is not readable, it still contains all of my data. So I'm not going to let that get out. You know, I mean, it's, remember this uh, gateway laptop fiasco? This thing contained enough sensitive data to take out the entire family. <laughs> I could have made him. Oh, the things that I could have done if I was a crook, but I'm not, so. Alright, we're almost done with the internet recovery startup process. And uh, we'll be there in just a moment. I was going to reuse that enclosure for one of the other 500 gig drives, but I decided not to. So once you've booted off of internet recovery, you should get a boot menu that has a couple of options. And the first option that you're going to want to pick if you want to format your new drive. So I could do that right now, but obviously I'm not going to. So what we're going to do is we're going to first open up Disk Utility. Now this is assuming that of course we have number one, a working time machine backup to come back from. We have a blank drive in the laptop. Whether it be an SSD or a mechanical drive like this one, you still have to do this. Open up Disk Utility and you're going to be selecting the internal drive which generally shows up on top and it's not going to have the USB logo on it you're going to click on that you'll partition it single partition just select partition layout one partition and then of course name it whatever you want and hit apply unless you want multiple partitions but generally for most people one partition is fine and that's basically it now you're going to then, once you, once you format it, you're going to click Restore from Time Machine Backup and Continue. And it's going to show you a list of Time Machine Backups that are valid. Select it. And then it's going to show you a list of working backups that it can pull from based on date. I only have, well, one day's worth of backups on this drive. It does incremental every time a file is changed, of course and we're going to pick one it could be depending on um, the range of backups we're looking at but pick one that is either the newest or the newest good one that you can think of and just look at the timestamps that's all you really have to do and then hit continue and once you do that it'll overwrite the new drive with the data from the old drive now it doesn't get any easier than that until things start going wrong now there's a couple of other ways you can do it. You can make an image of your old drive and recover from the image. Um, you can also, in some cases, if the destination is, is bigger or equal to uh, the, the source drive, you can use disk utility and simply drag the, um, the, t the uh, let's say we have our external hard drive. Let's say I plugged in my original hard drive into this dock it would show up here under the USB uh, drive list. I could simply copy this partition right over here, boink, and it would, it would basically overwrite the entire drive with my old partition. Or, I'm sorry, in this version of Mac OS, you would have to use um, the restore option. So you would select the partition you want to restore, hit restore, make sure that's set as the source, and then drag your destination down to here. It's really simple. And then it would hit you and hit restore and it overwrites it. But because my SSD is smaller than my original drive, that won't work. I have to resize the partitions, which you can't really do uh, in this version of Disk Utility, which is, um, let's see, what version are we on? Version 1.0. <laughs> so this is actually, uh, I believe, this is Lion. Um, because this machine originally shipped with Lion, if I hit restore, 
from the internet. Now this is another, this is option number four. If you don't have, let's say you're setting up a machine and it's going to be given to somebody else, you're, you're reassigning a machine, all you've got to do is select reinstall Mac OS, hit continue, and it'll put a blank brand new fresh copy of Lion or whatever it shipped with onto the new drive. And from that point, all you've got to do is upgrade it to whatever OS you want, either, you know, it could be any version between Lion and Sierra, and uh, there you go. But we're done here, so I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run Disk Utility, and I'm going to just scan my destination, or scan my new SSD for any uh, errors using Disk Utility, and just verify it, and make sure permissions are good, and move on with my life. Now on to the next process, which is um, the actual recovery and, uh, and repair process. All right, recovery, no, I'm sorry, the, the backup and restore partition, uh, part of this video. And there's a few other things you've got to do at the end of the process. Number one, you've got to enable third-party SSD support as long as the OS you're running supports it. Uh, because these videos tend to float around the Internet for a few years, you might want to verify um, that information by doing a quick Google search. Um, on whatever current OS you're running at the time you watch this video, make sure that uh, third-party trim support can be turned on and how to do it. Um, the other thing you want to do is make sure that you are using relevant information. At the time of this recording, which is late November 2016, what I'm telling you right now is valid information. So, Okay, I think we're good. There are no permissions issues. We're going to just restart the machine and boot it off of the internal SSD. I'm then going to do something I haven't done in a while, and that is do a full-time machine backup on my new external hard drive. Now on to the next part of this video. Alright, the first thing you want to do before running um, Time Machine to get a complete clean backup of all of your data is to start purging stuff you don't need. I was able to get rid of nearly 100 gigabytes worth of stuff. Um, I'm down to 100 and... actually a little, little more than that, a little less than that, about 50 gigabytes or so. We're down to 181 gigs of uh, data. So we're going to start running our Time Machine backup. And we're going to do a full backup right now. And that's going to take several, well, a couple hours at least. Uh, what I ended up doing is I pulled the, a good working 500 gig hard drive from my IBM uh, ThinkPad. Uh, what is it? The, the Z61. And there it is. Uh, it turns out both of my backup drives are dead. One of them I knew was dying. It's been in the slow process of, a, of an eventual death. And here it is. Um, so I just took the, uh, the, uh, repla the removable dock and just stuck it under this other hard drive. Um, it's backing up 252 gigabytes. Uh, I don't know why it's so much. I think it's, it's indexed before. Before I deleted all that data, so that, that could take some time. It'll probably be tomorrow morning when I get back to this. But the, what really adds insult to injury is this brand new Time Machine backup drive that I bought. Uh, well, it's really just a universal backup drive, but I just bought this thing and it's dead. I used it once and that killed it. So I, that's got to go back to the store tomorrow or maybe next week. I don't know. Um, so once I get this backup completed, I'll be able to swap the, uh, the SSD into the laptop. This thing weighs nothing. Amazing. Amazing how little these things weigh. But we'll see how it goes. We're going to put this in. Fun fact, uh, the Best Buy that I bought this from, the last drive I bought from that store was in 1999 or 90. I think it was 98. And it was an 8 gigabyte Western Digital. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. That was the last drive I ever bought there. So um, I thought that was a fun a fun little bit of information. We're up to 1.27 gigs. This is going to take some time. So we're going to let it fly, and I'm going to just leave the laptop here overnight, turn the brightness down, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, we've got our time machine done. And 
and uh, let's just confirm we have a complete backup here, and we do. Good. All right, let's shut it down. All we do is select Restore from Time Machine Backup, but first we need to open Disk Utility. And we need to format our new drive. Here it is. You'll see that I've already formatted it. But simply click on the root of the drive, the, the main drive here. This is before the partitions. And select Partition. And make sure you partition it the way you need to. In other words, in my case, I just use a single partition for Mac HD. And that's it. Okay. If you don't know how to format a drive in a Mac, there are plenty of util utorials, <laughs> utilities and tutorials and happy crap to show you how to do that. Um, restore from Time Machine Backup. Continue. There, it found our backup right there. And we're going to select... See, these were all done on the same day. <laughs> uh, the first backup was done, completed at 3.58 and then 3.49. We'll just pick one in the middle and hit continue. Really though, you I mean they're all these are all good backups, so it doesn't matter which one we pick. Um, I'm just going to pick like the middle one because any changes that were made between three and six a.m. will be reflected. So anything that was missed on the first pass, would, in theory. All right, hit restore after selecting our drive. Restore, continue, and uh, we wait. Oh, will we ever wait? This will probably take three hours, maybe. Remember, we're transferring data over a USB 2.0 connection. Connect, connect, connection. So the bottleneck is right around, right around here. So, okay. I just heard it go ding. Uh, that means it's done, right? Although I don't know how it could be done already because it had like 40 minutes left. So. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Either something went horribly wrong or horribly right. Uh, well, it booted. Let me put in my magic word. There we go. seems faster and again it better be faster now it's ramping up oh my I wonder if it's doing that because it used the temperature sensor on the hard drive originally wouldn't that be something there's my backup drive EDT Pro didn't come back. Oh, I deleted that. That's right. Let's see how long it takes it to load Excel. That used to take forever. Holy shit! Holy shit! That used to take like 20 minutes. Word. Word, yo. Wow! Oh. My. God. This thing is a rocket sled. And to finish the install, we, we need to enable trim support for third-party drives. And um, I found a nice tutorial on how to do this in Sierra. And here is the uh, YouTuber's name. In the title of the video, so I would suggest, uh, of course, running that, watching that tutorial if you're running Sierra. I do need to figure out why this thing is running so damn hot, though. It's still running hot, and it's I've let it cool down for a few minutes. I'm not sure what's uh, what's going on here, so I got to figure that all out. Based on that video, the command line in terminal is simply sudo trimforce enable. 
focus. There we go. Password. There we go. Do I wish to proceed? So here's the important notice that we're going to not read. Um, Apple doesn't want liability for damaged third-party SSDs, which is why this utility is not uh, enabled by default. That's all. So yes, I want to proceed. Yep. Thank you. A friend of mine recommended um, downloading a third-party utility that does this for you, um, but I believe he's working off of old information. Um, I believe he's running an older version of Mac OS. I think it was. Um, I think he's running Yosemite or something older than that. And uh, for whatever reason, he uh, he felt that he needed to download a utility that does this, but. Uh, there may be SSD optimization utilities that could be of benefit. Um, I might explore those, but uh, we'll see what happens. I do need to figure out why my system is running so hot. It turns out that it's actually very common. In fact, we're experiencing this at work on a lot of our MacBook Airs, where their battery life has taken a nosedive, and they're simply running entirely too fast. I'm sorry, too hot. I'm going to quit all of these apps here. I I am I I gotta say I am I was not expecting such a uh, rapid improvement in performance on this laptop. Um, wasn't expecting that at all. Actually, I expected I mean, a modest improvement in performance, but this was totally unexpected. So um, it should restart any moment. All right, so I've. Uh we finished restoring the machine. Everything is going well. Here are my final thoughts. This laptop has never been faster. Um, when I bought it, it was it was very slow, and I didn't realize it until now. But that mechanical drive um, was really just one big, massive bottleneck. And this laptop has... Like, for example, when I used to start up Word or Excel or PowerPoint, it used to take almost 30 seconds to get the applications to start. Now watch this. It has never been this fast. This is this is just crazy. I I don't even know what to say. This laptop is I can't even say it's double. It's more than double its original speed. I mean, it's just it's so fast. Let's see what uh, what it takes to start up Photoshop. This is one that, wow we I mean, it's instantaneous. I, I can't believe how fast this sucker is. iMovie was another biggie. It took forever to start iMovie. Let's see how long it takes now. Okay, a little slow, but look at that. I mean, this is a six-year-old laptop running the latest and greatest version of Mac OS X, Sierra. A couple of things. It is running hot. I mean, I could roast marshmallows off of this thing. Um, it is treating it like a new OS install, which means that it's likely indexing all of my photos, and that does take some time. It takes time, and it takes a lot of power. Once that process is done, it should be back to its normal self. Another thing, um, it's still... There's a there's a weird fix for one of the issues and and it, 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 it's, it's ramping down already. You hear the fan is cooling off. Um, there's a bug in OS 10 Sierra that involves uh, keychain and iCloud keychain syncing. If keychain syncing is not enabled in iCloud for some reason, the machine will run hotter. I don't know why that is. So I had to re-enable that. I did that before and it calmed things down a little bit, but um, looks like it might be okay. It's, it's actually cooling off. I know that when I first did the uh, Sierra upgrade, it was like, oh my god. The laptop, not only did it slow down, but it was running magnitudes hotter than it ever had before. And one of the issues we're experiencing at work with all of our MacBook Airs is that when people upgrade to Sierra, the battery life drops precipitously. Um, Part of that could be the indexing issue, part of it could be the keychain issue, part of it could be 
um, just the fact that it's a newer OS on an older machine. But judging by the performance of this laptop, I I don't even know. I don't even know how to respond. This thing is so fast. Um, I mean, Adobe After Effects. How long does that take to start up? I've never used After Effects. This would be the first time I ever started it. My God. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get another one of these and put it in my dad's laptop. He's got another old MacBook Pro. Oh, I have to download it. See how long that takes. I'll download everything it tells me to. Because I'm a sheeple. But look at how fast this thing is! I mean, oh my god! Look at that! That's a, that's a pro application right there. Just BAM! And I didn't have to spend $1,400 on a new laptop to get this kind of speed. All I did was I put a new SSD in there. I enabled trim support, by the way. To enable trim on uh, Sierra, at least, you go into Utilities, Terminal, and you type in a very simple command, sudo uh, trim something enable. Um, hold on, i got to look up the actual code. But just Google trim support. Sierra, and you'll find the, uh, the it's pseudo trim something, and yeah, I can't think of it, but I just ran the damn, I, I, had, I had to look it up, and I did, and, but look at my photo library, see how long that takes to load, proceed, repair my library, this might take a while, but yeah, we recovered from a time machine backup, and this laptop has never performed like this before. While we're doing that, I'm going to load iTunes. iTunes used to take eons to load. Look at this. Look at this. It's just, boom, done. Look at that. So fast. Oh, my God. Just... No lines, no waiting. Here you see your stuff. Boom, doom, bibbidi bum. There it is. It's just. Yeah. I, I, where, where, have I, where have SSDs been all my life? Jesus Christ. Anyway. I think by now you realize that this is the best $130 I've ever spent. And uh, I'm sticking to it. And I still get to keep my, my CD drive. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put more memory in this. I'm gonna bump it up to 16. And now that I know that it's definitely not a waste of money to do so, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna order a new battery for it. I'm gonna bump up the RAM and I'm gonna get a few more years out of this laptop because why not? And look at the condition it's in. I mean it's in beautiful condition. I take good care of this laptop. It's it's a good machine. So Oh man, I'm so, so, so happy I did this. You have no idea. There's one more thing we still need to do. We need to make sure the sudden motion sensor is disabled because that will protect a mechanical drive, but it does nothing for an SSD. In fact, it just delays things if the machine is bumped like this. See, we can do this without affecting anything anymore because there's no moving parts. So we need to make sure that the sudden motion sensor is disabled because there's no need for it. Um, so here's what we need to do. This is actually from Apple directly. Uh, open terminal, type in sudo pmset-g. And hit return. Password. Hit return. And we should see a status for the sudden motion sensor. There it is. SMS is 1, which means it's turned on. And uh, we need to turn it off. So the command for turning it off is sudo pm set
dash a SMS oops zero okay now we're going to retype the first command and take a look at the status and make sure it's a zero there it is no more sudden motion sensor we've already we've already like I said we've turned on trim support for third-party SSDs we did not need to download any third-party applications so we didn't do that and uh, oh man I am just like I am in shock I have never seen such a drastic improvement in performance on any machine on with any upgrade in my life I am now an SSD aholic I'm going to put SSDs in all the things. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I'd like to put one, replace my system drive on the uh, home theater box with an SSD now. Um, I'm actually considering that. And, uh, I mean, I, I guess I don't need to. It's, it's, there's no pressing need for it, but, I mean, I'd consider doing it at least. And, um, by the way, that machine is off the shelf right now because I need to replace two 80 millimeter fans that are now making a bunch of, or no, they're 40 millimeter fans that are making a bunch of noise. Um, I have one unplugged. I'm just going to replace them both. And I, I'll get some tomorrow. But, uh, all right. Well, that's, that concludes our, our video. So thanks for watching. This should do quite nicely.